Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to continue with the color series that we've been doing with a blue hydrangea. If you've missed any of the previous videos, you can check out the playlist for the color series down in the description box below. So I've got a few blues here on my palette that I'm going to be using for my hydrangea. And I'm mostly going to be using this Vertiter Blue from Holbein. And I'm also going to use Ultramarine Blue from Daniel Smith. And I will have all of the links down in the description box below if you'd like to check those out. I'm starting by mixing my blue and I've got to kind of clear a spot here because I've got a lot of green and purple happening. So I'm just going to add water and spread that out a little bit and then add in my blue. So it's not going to be a pure straight from the pan color, but that's okay. Alright, to start out my hydrangea, I'm going to just start adding petals. And there are a few things I want to keep in mind as I'm painting. I want to keep in mind that I want my hydrangea to sit kind of up here in this area. And as I add petals, I'm just going to pay attention to the space that I'm working with. So each of the hydrangea petals are going to look like a guitar pick almost. And I'm aiming for around four per individual bloom. And then I'm just dipping my brush in water. I didn't really rinse it. And that's how I'm going to get a slightly lighter shade for right here. So right now everything's going to look kind of jumbled together. That's why I'm trying to mix up my blues as I'm going. Just slightly. I don't want to make any drastic changes as I go. But every once in a while I'll dip my brush in ultramarine blue. Or dip it in water just to mix it up a little bit. Okay, now things are starting to fill in, so I'm going to start paying attention to the overall size of the hydrangea. And I want things to be rounded, but I don't want to look at this at the end and have it be a perfect circle. I'm going to make things a little bit irregular, just so it doesn't look perfect. Because while hydrangea are rounded, they're not in a perfect circle. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I go.
Okay, right here is where I'm going to stop. And you can kind of see I've got this rounded shape and it kind of comes up here in the middle. And that's where I'm going to add in my stem. So I've got some greens here on my palette. I'm going to work with what I've got and then mix in a little bit more paint. So I've got hooker's green. And I know I had undersea green already on my palette, so I'm going to mix a little bit more of that in. And then I'm going to add in my stem for my hydrangea. Actually, I changed my mind. I don't want this to have a stem. I'm just going to add leaves. So the leaves are going to come down here. And hydrangea leaves are massive. They're so beautiful and lush. So I'm going to try and recreate that here. So I'm trying to work quickly and I'm just paying attention to the overall shape of my leaf here. And then I think that's about right. So I'm going to end there. I'm just going to add in a little bit more of a red color. This is a uh, This is English red earth. It's a nice muted kind of terracotta red color. I'm mixing that in to add a second leaf here. Sometimes I add things in and then I'm like, why did I add that in? <laughs> like these leaves. You know, sometimes I add things thinking it's going to look amazing and then it just doesn't turn out how I want it. But we're going to keep going because I want to show you that sometimes it doesn't turn out how I want it to. And it's okay, we're going to make it work. So I have a couple of options here. I can add some more hydrangea up here and make this kind of a full painting instead of an isolated hydrangea, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue the painting up here and over here. So now I'm going to add in some more. And because this is for blue in the color series, these are all going to be blue, but I'm going to make the next ones just a little bit darker. So I've added in some Payne's Gray but I don't want them to be so dark that they take away from my focal flower here. So I'm adding in a little bit of water. And then I'm just going to paint more hydrangea up here.
If I were to paint this all over again, I might tape the edges of my painting so that I would have a nice clean edge. So you can see that with these over here, it has been less about building individual petals and more about just pressing down my brush and figuring out where I need more petals. And I'm not really paying attention to individual flowers. It's more just loose strokes to create that look. So that's another option if you want an even looser look and you don't want it to be so structured. You could just kind of place your brush around and see kind of like this. So I'm generally making a an individual petal, but I'm really just kind of adding on and building the shape as I go. And <laughs> I'm doing that only because I wasn't planning on doing a full page hydrangea. And so I'm trying to hurry so I can get back to my actual painting here. The whole thing is my painting, but this is my focal bloom.
So this one was looking a little bit too rounded. So I'm just adding a few extra petals so that it doesn't look perfect. Okay, this turned into <laughs> a much grander painting than what I, what I was anticipating when I sat down to paint this. But I'm kind of liking how it's turning out. So let me show you how I'm going to finish this off. I've got to wait till everything dries before I can add all my finishing details, but this main part is dry. So I'm going to go in with my dark green and just add in a few little lines here. These are the stems that are holding each of those individual blooms in place. So if you learn nothing else from this video, this is a testament to seeing your painting through to the end. Because I was really tempted to rip this paper off and start over, start the filming process over again. And I'm so glad that I didn't. I actually really like how this is turning out. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a moment like that. Have you ever painted something and you hated how it turned out, but you stuck with it? Okay, now I've got my dark green still, and I'm going to add my detail lines over the top. You know that I love detail lines. And while I'm adding in details, if you're enjoying this video, will you please give it a thumbs up? That helps me know if you're enjoying this content and what kind of videos I should do in the future. We're going to continue the color series in the next video. We're we'll be painting some purple pansies. And I'm really excited about that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any future videos. Okay, that turned out a little odd. So I'm just gonna blend those lines right in. Everything's still wet, so they're just gonna disappear and We'll let that dry and then I'll try again in a second. You're seeing all sorts of fun mistakes that I'm making in this video. <laughs> One of the most important things you can learn with watercolor is how to adapt. So like how I 
filled over the top of that. How I just kept going with my hydrangea. If you can learn to adapt and just let go and kind of let the painting tell you what <laughs> what it wants to be. It's amazing what can come out of it. So I don't want too many details everywhere else because this is my focal flower. So I'm adding a few details, but not as many as I'm adding in here. All right, so that's still a little bit too wet, so I'm gonna leave that and let it dry for a minute. All right, now this is dry, so I'm going to go in and attempt to add in these little details. I'm liking how these are turning out better than my first attempt, so. All right, I'm going to call this finished. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Subscribing is totally free and YouTube will just notify you when I've posted a new video so that you can come check it out. Thanks again for watching. Bye!